हरि ओम लेट एस स्टार्ट टूडेज डिस्कशन अबाउट द भगवद गीता टिल यस्टरडे आई टोल्ड यू द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ भगवद गीता एंड द बैकग्राउंड इन्वॉल्ड द स्टोरी ऑफ कौरवाज एंड पांडवाज द स्टोरी ऑफ श्री कृष्णा एंड ऑल द इवेंट्स दैट हैपन बिटवीन द कौरवाज एंड पांडवाज दैट लेट टू द वॉर सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट दिस वे ऑल्सो दैट द वॉर वॉज इन्फोर्स्ड ऑन द पांडवाज बाय कौरवाज एंड दुर्योधन द मेन द एल्डर ऑफ द कौरवाज he even made a statement that if they want to be alive they have to fight it was the struggle of egos he wanted to prove that he is the best warrior he is the most powerful person and he is the richest king so it was all about power and desires so the armies this Kaurava was also started gathering support from different kingdoms Pandava was also started gathering support from different kingdoms so about 13 million army was there with Kauravas and 5 million army was with Pandavas but Pandavas had the advantage that distinct advantage was Shri Krishna and Shri Krishna was the chariot driver of Arjuna so the armies came face to face and the war was about to start everyone was charged up and then arjuna started looking at the people who are in the enemy army and what he saw he saw his great grandfather bhishma who loved him like a father all his childhood and he became very emotional the next person standing to bhishma was dronacharya the guru of arjuna when he looked at his guru he remembered that his guru just loved him even more than his own son gave him every bit of the knowledge that he had no discrimination just unconditional love is what arjuna received from his guru and his heart was full of this sadness that what is happening here these two masters i am fighting with them this two so dear to me and look what i am doing am i crazy man i have nothing against these people and then he started looking at the other people there he said i have nothing against these people either they are just serving the army of kauravas they are not my enemies i have nothing against them and what is making me fight against them Arjuna was very confident that he is a very strong warrior. There was some uh, other war that he was a part of some time ago, and he defeated all these great warriors. So Arjuna was confident that he will certainly be a very important warrior, and he'll certainly defeat. them he had that confidence so it was not about he fearing his own death but it was about what he was going to do to this people and that brought so much of compassion in him and he started thinking that after this war war the world will not look the same many of these people will not be there many of this wonderful relationships that are there right now will be destroyed i will certainly not be able to see my guru either he will be dead or i'll be dead there is no third option 
either my great grandfather bhishma will be alive or i will be alive there is no third option look what it has done to him we have never faced such a situation in our life when we think of our loved ones we may encounter death of these people but we don't have to kill them or they are not ready to kill us this is a very very negative situation for arjuna right now you see all over the world we are facing the threat of corona virus it's not that there is no way out there is way out of that if you can quarantine yourself safely and don't go out there is every chance that you will be saved but look did arjuna have a way out arjuna had no way out he was just there with his weapons and his great grandfather and his guru and all his cousins and all the people they were there with the weapon so the death was certain this is a very very difficult situation if you if you see what he has talked about in the chapter 1 i am discussing all this chapter 1 with you guys arjuna started thinking that look why i have want to kill them for the kingdom for the peace of land peace of land is not important for me because it anyway doesn't belong to me and i have no desire for it you talking about the pleasures in the kingdom i have no attachment to those pleasures and this statement of arjuna there is a evidence because he lived in the forest for 12 years just before that when he was sent into the forest by the condition when they lost the game of dice he was in, there in the forest for 12 years so he was used to that lifestyle see in yoga 12 years period is very important it's called tapa one tapa physical body changes in 7 years so every cell in your body is replaced say roughly around the period of 7 years yoga says you can also change mind the total period for change of body mind together like a complete new person is 12 years so if you follow one discipline for 12 years you have mastered that that's the idea of yoga so now he was there in the forest for 12 years so he certainly mastered the art of living in the forest that is with minimum needs without any pleasures of life so he said i have no attachment with this kingdom and look at what cost i am getting this kingdom back the blood of my own people the cousins they are my cousins they were not very nice to me to my brothers to my wife but look they made a mistake we all make mistakes the big heart you should forgive and he thought that he has a big heart and he thought that it's not worth the whole kingdom is not worth the blood of all of these people and he said if i win the war or if i get my kingdom back the people that i want to tell are the people who are going to be dead if i win and i don't want that then he talked about soldiers he said this is my personal relations with these people but look at the soldiers they have nothing against me there are soldiers on my side who are supporting me and there are soldiers who are on the other side they are just employed by that kingdom they are serving their kingdom they have no role to play in my wife's humiliation they have no role to play in the plots that kauravas did to kill us and i am going to kill them what will happen at the end of this war at the end of the war there will be few million people who will be dead few million people who will die and who are these people they are young strong people who take responsibility of their family their elderly parents or relatives their little kids so these people if they are dead their families their kids their wife their parents their uncles the older people they are left without support 
Arjuna is telling Shri Krishna in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. This is all first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Look at the vision of Arjuna. He is able to understand the situation from a very broad perspective. He first starts with his own feeling with Bhishma, his father, father figure, his guru. And then he expands it to every soldier and then he goes to society. He said few million people, young people, strong people who are good people because they are ready to die for their commitment. Look what he is talking about soldiers. He respects soldiers to the highest. Soldier is the one who can die for his beliefs, who can die for his values. Any person who is ready to give up his life for his values is a good person. So he says this world will be without all these good men. And he says it will destroy the society, the balance of the society. It will make society with no strong laws like the, the, the law and order will go down in the society. And the weaker sections will be abused by powerful because there is no support of these good soldiers to this weaker section such as women, such as kids, such as elderly people. And he says this war will lead to an abuse against this. And saying all of these things, he feels guilty. Look at the state of Arjuna. He is full of compassion. He is full of sadness. He is full of non-attachment. He has this purity in his mind. And he has this vision of what's going to happen after this. He is feeling that sadness and sense of responsibility to the women and these kids of the soldiers who are going to be dead. And then what he says to Sri Krishna is very important. He says that I am not interested in this kingdom anymore because the cost that we are paying or we will be paying is too big. I am not ready to take any responsibility of such a bad karma, a sin. So he says, anyway, I know how to live in the forest and anyway, I know how to meditate because I have done it for 12 years and I have you as my best friend and a guru. Who else I need? And if I don't go to the forest, I don't even mind getting killed right now by these cousins of mine. At least they will be happy and war will be over. Just one death of me, war will be over. So, Arjuna says, I am not able to think. These are all the thoughts that are in my mind. My heart is full of pain and suffering. I am very sad. My mind is going crazy. My mouth is all dry. I cannot think. My body has lost all the energy. I am trembling. In all this difficult situation, I think I am completely lost. So, hey Shri Krishna, my dear friend and my guru, please tell me what should I do? Tell me whatever I am thinking, is it the right way or is it the wrong way? Help me get over the suffering that I am going through because I don't know any other way but to take your advice guidance and to your advice. You are my guru. You are my friend. You are my cousin. You are my beloved. So please help me. This is the end of chapter 1. So now this is the background of the whole Bhagavad Gita in the first chapter. So what Sri Krishna has done in this entire 17 chapters, remaining 17 chapters is he has helped Arjuna 
come out of his negative state of mind. So you can call Bhagavad Gita a psychotherapy. You can call Bhagavad Gita a technique of getting rid of negativity and suffering and stress and anxiety and anger and depression. Because look at Arjuna's mind. He was stressed for sure. He had anxiety for sure. But he was also having anger because he was forced into these situations. He also had extreme sadness and depression in his heart. So all the negative things that you can think of, Arjuna had that. And what Krishna told him is a way to come out of that. And that's why Bhagavad Gita is such a unique text that applies to any situation which creates negative state of mind. So it's just not about solving Arjuna's questions. Krishna has gave a big framework to solve all the negative problems. All the problems that we have in our life, all the negative states of mind that we experience in our life, all the negative emotions that we face in our life, all the questions that confuse us in our life. All our problems with relationships, all our problems with society, all our problems with ethics and morality, all our problems with our health, all our problems with death, all our problems with the question of the universe, question about the universe is the subject of Bhagavad Gita. And I'm going to stop here today. So, we are up to date with the background of Bhagavad Gita. So now, from tomorrow, I will start speaking on different concepts mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapters, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 and so on. So, Hari Om.